Hey, you're almost there. This is the last presentation on polynomials, and we're going to put it all together. Look up the top here. We're going to look again at, here we are, zeros, roots, factors, and problem solving. So it's going to lead to looking at graphs in some detail and uh, getting some cross-links with other things that we've done in the course, like roots of unity. It's amazing how all this stuff links up. So uh, let's have a look. We're going to uh, be looking at some more graphs here and um, certainly going to look at trying to factorise some of these little dudes. And you might think, well, yeah, I can see there's going to be an overlap with some of the uh, complex number stuff from before. And uh, then finally, let's look at this one. We're going to be having a look at hmm, a polynomial where we're trying to model. We've just got f of t there. But right at the end of this presentation, what we're going to do is look at how uh, quartics even can be used to model practical situations. So there is going to be a culmination in uh, a very practical and applied way of all this uh, development of polynomials. So let, let's get going and see what uh, we can do this time. All right, so here we are. The screen clipping is here from Hayes and Harris Publications, so have a look at their specialist maths book, and it's zero root and factor finding, of course. So we've done a bit of this before, and uh, we've got some facts here about cubics which have got whole number or integer coefficients in front of the terms there. Every cubic polynomial must cut the axis at least once, and so it has at least one real zero. Okay. Every cubic polynomial, polynomial must cut the axis at least once. Now, I think we looked at that because um, we said if the leading coefficient was greater than naught, for large x it would be going up, and for a large positive x, and for large negative x it would be going down. So clearly that's got a cut there, or even if it's got a point of inflection either way, then it's going to cut, isn't it? Cut the x-axis. So in one real spot, and then you're going to have a quadratic factor, and uh, that's going to give you the other two zeros, Right, but they could be real and rational. What am I talking about? Well, here we are, and we could have what? x squared, that take 4x plus 3. So that factorises, giving two real uh, solutions, 3 and 1, something like that. Uh, real and irrational, where the second um, uh, qu quadratic factor isn't factorisable. Um, something like, let's say, neg 4x um, take 2. Um, and that doesn't give you a rational root because b squared take 4ac <laughs> is not a perfect square. And then remember, we can have complex roots hiding in that quadratic factor. Something like x squared take 4x, um, uh, let's say, plus 5. <clears throat> and that would give you a b squared take 4ac or a discriminant less than naught, and therefore have complex conjugates here. Okay, and they hide within these real coefficients because their sum and product of their uh, values there is a real. Okay, so here's three real zeros, one real and two imaginary zeros. Okay, so these, these could be uh, uh, one, real, one uh, uh, whole number there and uh, uh, two... Uh, irrational and so on. But here, of course, you've just got the one real and uh, the rest of it is hiding, if you like, on the real number plane, the complex conjugates. All right, just remembering in this uh, course, we're only doing real polynomials. That is, uh, every term has to have a real coefficient. All right, let's go down and see what we can make of all this. Here we are. We'll use a graphics calculator to find a rational zero for cubics, okay, and two rational zeros for quartics. Oh, why? Why are we going to use a calculator now? Well, have a look. A rational zero means something like, uh, well, maybe two thirds, or three x take two would give you two thirds. And then, of course, if you could find that rational zero on the calculator, then you could make up your quadratic factor, 3x squared plus uh, ax, and let's say it's a 2, so it'd be neg 1 or something, 
remember we did this before, this undetermined coefficient here in this other one, we, we can work out these if the, quad, if the cubic was 3x cubed and 2 on the end, that sort of thing. Remember that? So uh, just remember that. So then we'd be right, we can use quadratic theory and two rational zeros for a quartic y, x take 2 by, I don't know, 2x take 1. If we could find 2 and a half as the zeros, get those two factors. And again, with a quartic, we would be able to put in an undetermined coefficient type thing here, whatever the numbers come out to be. Because we would have here, again, bring it down to a quadratic, and we can handle that with quadratic theory. Okay, get the idea, that's what they're talking about here. There is a theorem called the theorem on rational roots, which enables you to find these sorts of zeros generally, but that's no longer in the course. So we're going to pop in with a calculator here and try to break into these cubics and quartics and get some easy factors, if you like. The rational uh, zeros are going to give us some nice easy factors there. Okay. Come down and let's start the process and get your skills going here. All right, so find all the zeros of this. Find where it cuts the x-axis, knowing nothing. Okay, so we would go to uh, uh, a calculator, and I'm going to be talking about the Casio 9860 Plus here. So you go to graph mode, you get a graph, and then you go Shift F5 to get um, the... Uh, what they call the roots, it's really the zeros or the x-intercepts here. But on the Casio, it calls them the roots, the roots of the equation putting the polynomial equal to zero. So it's really the zeros. And if you scroll along there, you come to this one, and it's 0.6 recurring. So that indicates two-thirds, isn't it? So therefore, 3x take 2 is a factor. Notice we generally avoid doing this because it's messy with a fraction in there. So if the zero is two thirds, the, put it like this, three x take two, when you put that equal to an order course, you do get two thirds. Therefore, we go into the undetermined coefficient method here. We don't need a coefficient in front of this one because three x by x squared will give us a three x cubed. And then I don't need a undetermined coefficient down the end because neg two by neg one will give us that two. We expand it all, collect up the x squareds and the x's. Notice I haven't shown that expansion here. Remember uh, the extension of foil for each of the terms. Okay, collect them up. And then we're going to say the x squared term here has to equal neg 14. The x, squared, the x term here has to equal 5 from the original polynomial. And uh, therefore, we can solve for a and... Uh, here, a is neg 4. You should <coughs> check it in here, uh, or just refer to consistency. Consistent with each equation. Okay, just make sure that is that point is made. So therefore, it's 3x take 2 by quadratic, and into the quadratic theory to find the other zeros there, and then we've got all the zeros in um, full form. All right, okay, got it. Nothing new there, really. Just bring it together in a different way. Okay, let's have a go. 3G1, won't take you long for that. I would uh, try to do all of these so you really get your head around it. We've got some quartics here. So you're going to have, remember, you're going to have to get two rational zeros from the calculator, then the undetermined quadratic factor um, will take you up to degree four, if you see what I'm talking about. Okay. Let's have a look at the answers now. Here we are, slipping off the page a bit there. Okay, now they have done this differently. Um, they've done the division process by uh, neg, neg one is the zero, so they've put it there. Um, we said we were going to use this method, didn't we? Uh, neg 1 is 0, so x plus 1 is a factor, uh, x squared plus ax plus 1, and expand it. So you can either do division, remember this synthetic division is not in the course, 
you are allowed to use it's a valid mathematical idea or you could do long division okay but uh, this undetermined coefficients is probably um, quicker than this one okay so then equate co equating coefficients so have a look they have done it with uh, synthetic division all the way. Alright, let's go down and look at part C. C and D. Okay. E and F. Alright, okay. Uh, let's have a go at moving on. Hope you're getting some right here uh, and see uh, what you think. Go back and study the stuff we've said before if you're not sure. Come on down, example 27 here. Find all the roots of this little creature here. Okay, putting on the calculator, uh, shift F5, you get this one here. Okay, G solve, and you find that it comes to this decimal. Now you've got to recognize that is neg 1, 6. Okay, therefore 6 plus, 6x plus 1 is a factor, okay? Just check that, 6x plus 1. If that's a factor, that's going to give that 0. And so x is neg 1, 6. That's what we're talking about. Neg 1, 6 will give you a factor of x plus 1, 6, which we don't want to use in that fractional form. So we go to this form here. Okay, and that's the undetermined coefficient method and then uh, equating coefficients, so expanding it all, and then this one as well, collecting all the terms up, equating coefficients of x squared and of x, you get two equations, and then they've given it a tick. They put, probably should put something here which checks in that equation as well. Okay, a tick is probably not enough. So you've solved for a from the first equation, and you say, so you should say which checks in the second equation. So therefore, you've got A is 20, so uh, you can, um, uh, sorry, A is uh, whatever it is, 2. So here it is, there it is in there. And now you can use quadratic theory to get the other roots, and they are a complex conjugate pair. They're hiding in here, because this has got a negative over here uh, discriminant. All right, have a go at that. Let's have a look now. Uh, question two and three, two, three and four. I think you uh, need to uh, have a look at all of them. Look at question four down here. The, find there's zeros using technology. There are no rational zeros here. Okay, so you won't be able to recognize them when you uh, see uh, the decimal off the calculator. It won't be 0.666, which is two thirds and so on. Okay, because uh, they might be something like 2 plus or minus root 5 and 2 plus, or, oh, let's make it different, <coughs> neg 1 plus or minus 3 root 2. Now these as decimals you'll never recognise. So you won't actually be able to find the exact zeros of these. You're going to find the decimal values of them using technology. All right. Okay, so just remember now, you go to graph mode, uh, on the Casio 9860 Plus, then Shift F5 to G solve and solve your graph for the zeros, which is called roots on the Casio. All right, come down here. Let's have a look. And again, um, there we are. Uh, they've done it with synthetic division again. So that's a, a bit disappointing. The example shows the uh, other method. And uh, just repeating that now, neg 2 is 0, x plus 2 would be the factor. Then you go x squared plus ax plus 3, because you've got a 6 here, and go on like that, as it did in that previous example. So you can do it either way. Okay, so that's down to D. Check your work there. We'll go to E and F. Okay, oh, the boat's rocking again here, mate, slipping off the side. Okay, let's go to question two. A, B, C, a little bit more of D to come. D, 
D E I N F. Okay. Let's go to G and H. Let's go to question four now. Okay, you see all these funny numbers here. Okay, it's only a cubic. Oh, I was talking about how back at the other problem that was uh, possibly aquatic with um, irrational uh, uh, zeros there. All right, so hope you're going well. Think about it. Build up your skills. Let's go on now. So here's some theorems on real polynomials. Let's study them. Um, this is uh, basically what we have discovered through our um, calculations and our trying to find zeros and graphs and things. So here we are, unique factorization theorem. This is important. Every real polynomial, so there, that's a polynomial with real coefficients of degree n, can be factorized into n complex linear factors, some of which may be repeated. Okay, so if it's a real polynomial, you can have, and you've got a degree n, so if it's cubic 3, there'll be three complex linear factors. Hey, hang on, is that right? What about uh, the one that says z take 2, and then maybe z uh, take 1 plus i, I can see this conjugate pair, z take 1 take i. Oh well, yeah, ah, how are they going to call that? A, a linear, a complex linear factor. Ah, here you are. Look at this. Real zeros are complex zeros. What? Describe that for me, please. We've done this, haven't we? Remember the set of complex numbers or imaginary numbers is the biggest set, and the real numbers are in here. As the real numbers are the complex numbers of the form a plus b i where b is zero. So reals are a subset of the complex. Real zeros are complex zeros. Okay. You can think of it like that. A complex number. Okay. They belong in that. So to keep it completely general, we can say that. Okay. <coughs> Here we are. Next one. Every real polynomial can be expressed as a product of real linear and irreducible quadratic factors where the discriminant is less than all. Okay. So you can have real linear and irreducible quadratics. Can't go any simpler. Okay, here if, it's, if that's a zero, real polynomial, then it's complex conjugate is also a zero. Okay, so uh, there we have it. Every polynomial of odd degree has at least one real zero. Okay, so the idea here is between the two of these, what we're saying if you have a complex zero and a real quadratic, its, it's conjugate must also be a zero, so its sum and product are real, because a real uh, polynomial, therefore, they've got, you've got to hide those i's in there somewhere. And here, if it's odd degree, you've got at least one real zero. Okay, so one real zero means the other two are hiding yeah, as complex, complex conjugate pair, but you can't have another complex zero because you'd see the i when you expand it in the uh, real polynomial. A real polynomial doesn't have any coefficients with i in it. Uh, you're getting the idea. Just think about all that rambling on I just did and see if you can track through that. Okay, uh, I want you to know that. Probably write that down in your book and just check it out so that you can see it summarises things nicely. Let's keep going. Here we are, a little bit more skill building here. So if something like this is a zero of this, where a is real, got to be in this course, we're only doing real polynomials, find a and hence find all the zeros. So the first thing you say, ah, it's real, so the conjugate must be there also, and then you're going to make up now a, a quadratic factor, which will be a real quadratic factor, because these zeros can hide, because the sum of them is negative six, and the product is 10. Okay, so, so therefore from the it's going to form the quadratic x squared minus the sum of the roots 
plus the product. Please remember that property of a quadratic function here. When you've got one x squared, the simplest quadratic factor, uh, then the sum of the roots, neg b over a, is the coefficient there, and c over a is constant down the end, which is the sum of the product. So just writing that down, you can think of this as the simplest quadratic minus the sum of the roots by x plus the product. Okay, that's the simplest quadratic factor, which can hide these these things in a real polynomial. So we'll just pause that for a minute now. So just looking at it there, it's x squared minus the sum of the roots by x plus the product is the simplest quadratic factor there. Okay, so now we can uh, equate um, coefficients again. So here's our real polynomial. And uh, if we multiply all the terms out here, then uh, we can co equate the coefficients of x squared and x. Um, the idea here, though, is that they're, they're just plucking out those. You might write the whole expansion out. Okay. See this a equals two in both cases. When you you should say this, so it's consistent with both equations. That's very very important. Um, and then of course um, we can say if a is two then uh, the other zero was the conjugate and then 3 over 2 um, because we've got that as the other um, zero here because the linear factor was 2x take 3. Okay, so ax take 3, if a is 2, 2x take 3. Okay, so have a look there. Now, the important thing here is we did put in ax and uh, neg 3 because we had to create the neg 30 there so that's a interesting little one here we have this um, factor and we, we put this ax take 3 for our linear factor so the undetermined coefficients were in that linear factor there with a um, out the front so that we're getting ax cubed so slightly different there for uh, that particular one where we've got the quadratic known because of the conjugate pair and then the undetermined coefficient in a linear term. All right, there's another method down here we could say, and that's using remainder theorem. If we know that is a zero, we can sub it in there and say it's equal to naught and go through all of this. And um, so then, uh, yeah, it's a big, big mess, isn't it? Because you get the final thing real and imaginary parts has to equal naught or naught plus naught i and therefore we say both of these are zero um, and in both cases a is two that's uh, fairly messy because you've got to use the cubic there um, yeah probably to avoid that it is a it is a valid method though isn't it using the remainder theorem sub in that zero um, and uh, find uh, the a that way, making the function zero. A bit hard, I think. Okay, come down, and then uh, here, once you've got the a value, you can say there's a conjugate pair, and uh, then go into the idea of dividing a neg three plus i through a neg three take i. This is not in the course. I'd leave this out. Uh, probably at this stage, but that is synthetic division, and uh, you could do it that way. All, all a bit long there, I think, in getting A like that and then going into it. So probably better just to construct the quadratic factor from the conjugates. All right, come down and have a go, and this is in 3G2 now. <coughs> Find all third degree polynomials with zeros like that. Okay, so. Um, here, all third degree polynomials might, must put an A in front to generalise it. Okay, so go through and just think of these things. Uh, if that's a zero, what's another zero? Quadratic factor and all that stuff. The, these are very important questions, so I do all of these. Okay, pause it and have a go. I'll show you the solutions now. Okay, I just want to make one note here. It says 
all cubics. So that k has to be in front, and you should k say k is not equal to zero. If k is zero, the whole thing is just zero all the time. So, okay. So just keep in mind if it says all cubics, that's important. You've got to generalise it with that a in front. Okay. Have a look at those two, and we'll come down and look at question three and <coughs> four. There's question three. Question four. Okay, let's go on and see what uh, more little tricky do's we can do here. So here's another one, one zero of that. Uh, there is purely imaginary, one zero is purely imaginary, find A. There it is in two spots, and the zeros of the polynomial. So we use the same sort of thing. This time, let the imaginary zero be bi, where b is not equal to naught. So it's got no real part, purely, purely imaginary, the zero. Okay, so all the coefficients are real. You should put that in, therefore, the conjugate is also a zero. So this is naught plus bi, so its conjugate is naught take bi. So neg bi is also a zero, bi and neg bi. Okay, so here you want the sum is zero and the product of the zeros is b squared. Neg b squared, i squared. And i squared is neg one, so it's plus b squared. Okay, so these zeros come from x squared plus b squared. So remember, the simplest quadratic is x squared minus the sum of the roots, which is zero here, plus the product. That's the simplest quadratic factor and uh, the product was b squared and the sum was zero so it's x squared plus b squared okay so you say x squared plus b squared by now let's work out you've got ax cubed so this has got to be ax and then uh, you want b squared down the end so here's a trick put 15 on b squared so that when you multiply that across there it gives 15 don't introduce too many pro numerals here and then when you expand them all here is your final expanded um, quadratic, or cubic actually here, and uh, therefore equating coefficients, we can say the coefficient of x squared is that, the coefficient of x is 10, so this one is 10. Okay, and now we've got to try and solve that, so let's do it by substitution. Here, if you uh, try and take this, I oh, know we can solve that exactly, um, I think because uh, what have we got down here um, we, if we use substitution <coughs> first of all b squared a plus b squared multiplying through is 15 so therefore b squared a we can use that can you see that there's a substitution in there so multiplying through by b squared and then we can use substitution of the other term from the other expression that's one way of doing it and uh, you could substitute A across, but this is nice and neat. So you can sub for anything, A or B or B squared. Um, you could put B squared in there from this one, but this is a nice one because it wipes out that term. 10 plus B squared, and therefore uh, B squared is 5, plus or minus root 5. Don't forget a squared equation there, an equation which is quadratic, a square on the vari variable, is uh, got two roots, plus or minus. Don't forget that. Okay, so uh, then we're going to find A, so you can sub them back in here, and A is 2. Okay, so you've got a linear factor, that's a 15 there, and so that is 2x plus 3, and then A is 2, you've put down your found A, and we've got the two zero, the, all the zeros there. Okay, so this is B plus or minus bi here and b was root 5 so you can put it all together so that's interesting a little bit more tricky a little bit trickier that one because it's got the uh, a's in two places in the polynomial and uh, you've got to be a little bit careful all right so come on down and see if you can do something with some of these well, there we are uh, similar ones a only in one spot here 
and K only in one spot, so it's not too bad. Um, and again, one's purely imaginary, so go through that with the idea of it being BI and discuss it and so on. All right, let's look at the solutions. So there's question five. Okay, the final line here is important. Okay, and uh, don't forget to put in um, this idea. Another zero is neg bi, where b is real, and that, that means it's a conjugate because the polynomial was real. Put some of this explanation in. That's important. Okay, let's look at question six. Solution there. All right, well, we're coming to the end. Um, hope you're having some fun there, getting a little bit tricky with the algebra. Let's have a look at the final few pieces here. We're going to try and factorise expressions of this form. Okay, and we're going to go back to what we did with in complex number land z to the n equals c to help factorise. So, therefore, you're trying to factorise these sorts of things that I had on the front page. Can you factorise those? Now, do you remember z to the n equals 1 are the nth roots of unity, and they follow this form. Do you remember omega here, whereas that's the smallest um, root of 1, nth root of 1, the smallest argument here, 2 pi on n, I hope you remember that. Why is it 2 pi as we go around the circle, and then we find the nth root of it, do you remember that? So you better go back and look at that from the complex numbers videos, that part of the course. So let's have a look at how that can help us here in real polynomials. Okay, so here we go. Z to the fourth take 16, Z to the fourth plus 16. So to factorise Z to the fourth take 16, we could find the zeros. Remember, zeros, factors, roots. So to factorise it, let's find a zero. Z to the fourth equals 16. Z to the fourth equals 2 to the fourth. And so um, z on 2 to the 4th equals 1. OK, dividing through by 2 to the 4th there. So therefore, z on 2 is the 4th roots of unity. There we are, and it's pi on 4. Remember the Marv theorem where we say it was um, uh, that 1 is uh, cis naught plus or minus k times 2 pi. And then if it's the fourth root, we're going to divide through by 4. And so you're going to get 2 pi on 4. Remember all that stuff? Okay, by De Marv's theorem. But De Marv's theorem is driving that. And therefore, uh, what are the um, zeros here? We will have z is uh, here multiplying across by 2. 2, 2, omega, 2, omega squared, 2, omega cubed. Where omega is 2 pi on 4 or pi on 2, in other words, for the fourth root set. So therefore, and cis pi on 2, you can change back to a plus b i form, is i. So it's now z take 2 from that 0, z take 2i, z plus 2, z plus 2i. Remembering that the factors are basically, you want to see some crude stuff here, z take the root, isn't it? Is a factor. That's what we're using. So actually coming into the factors through the roots of the equation, zeros of the equation. Okay, so I'd rather put that actually, I'd rather put zero, okay, of the equation, uh, zero of the function, or the roots of the equation, okay. All right, so let's have a look at B, factorise Z to the fourth plus 16, we're going to find the zero of that polynomial, Z to the fourth plus 16, or the solutions or roots of this equation here. So getting it on the other side, it's neg 2 to the fourth. So that's z on 2 again, dividing by 2 to the fourth is neg 1. So now we're going into the De Marv's thing again. So this is cis pi this time, because neg 1 is around here, isn't it, with an argument of pi. Get that idea there. So then, we're going to say plus or plus k times 2 pi, uh, and we'll go positively, and then we're going to say, well, we've got to raise it to the quarter, okay, by, uh, by just the fourth root of that, 
So usually the Weyl's theorem, that's a quarter of the argument. Okay, so multiplying across, we've got two cis that, where k can be naught, one, two, three, because we're going to be looking at four solutions here. So it's the same thing this time. Um, and then simplifying this, if k is naught, it's pi on four, k is one, three pi on four, five pi on four, seven pi on four. So you're sort of doing uh, the roots of unity um, working out here for neg one on the other side. So just remember the trick here. Um, the idea is to divide it through so you're working with roots of unity. So what's the answer now? Multiplying across, it's two, and we've got two in front of all of these. And if we call cis pi and four omega, it's two omega, two omega q, two omega to the fifth, two omega to the seventh, where omega is cis pi on four. Okay, so what are the, um, they are the zeros, here's the factors here. Okay, using the idea of the factor is, here it is up here, z minus the zero of that um, polynomial, or the root of the uh, um, expression equal to naught. Okay, and you should put this. So that's a handy little overlap with complex numbers, and so is quadratic iterations, where, of course, roots of unity give rise to cycles there in z going to z squared. So try and link up all these um, different uh, themes within the course. Okay, come down and have a go and see what you think. Oh, we've got this one first. Hang on, I forgot this one. Find the zeros of z to the fourth take one using the nth roots method and then show this and this. We'll do that in a minute. So, zeros, put the polynomial equal to naught. Here we are, z to the fourth equals one. Then uh, that's the idea here. Uh, one to the one quarter and you can write uh, one as cis k times two pi where k could be naught, one, two, three, um, and those give you four roots. So here, that we've got the idea, and putting that in there, we get the usual one, one, omega, omega squared, omega cubed, where 2 pi 4. So you could do this differently. Cis naught plus k times 2 pi, and write them out. You could have, therefore, um, cis naught, and then cis uh, 2 pi, etc., and then uh, d dividing through or taking to the fourth power. So uh, uh, go there by the wire. So it's cis naught, which is one, cis two pi on four, etc. So they have condensed that in this here and said putting in k is naught, one, two, three, and four. So it doesn't matter how you set that out. So it's cis two pi on four because of this uh, idea of Dormar's theorem, you've got to um, raise the complex numbers of one quarter, which is one quarter of the argument there. Okay, so there we are, um, finding the zeros using, that's the nth root of one idea, getting it across the other side, and using complex number theory. Show that, here we are, we've got this one up here now, show that z take one is that. So here we've got one is a root, Therefore, we can divide through by one. So this would be like this. Now, z, uh, z to the fourth, no z cubed, no z squared, no z, and take one. You go through like that um, and uh, see what you think. Um, and this would be z cubed, z cubed, take z cubed, uh, z to the fourth, take z cubed, disappears, so this will be naught z cubed plus z cubed down there, and so on. So that would be the way you would do it in this course. Remember, synthetic division is not in it. It is a bit quicker to do it this way. Okay, so you could show that by long division. And then the last part is an interesting little trick here. From A and B show that this comes to 15. Okay, where omega is cis 2 pi and 4. Let's have a look at that. 
So here we've, from A we've got that, so write down what they've asked us to show. Okay, comparing them, okay, if I put two in each of them, put it in there, I get this, put two in here, I get 15, and we've shown it. So it's just substitution into the form that we have there, and, and the form that we have here, and saying they're the same. All right. Want to try some of these little tricks? This is where the course can get a bit hard to see a little trick that you might do to solve a problem. Conceptually, it's not hard, but you've got to combine the stuff together in the right way to get the solution. Okay, come down now. And here's some for you. Now, this is very important work because it overlaps nicely with complex numbers. It's in quadratic iterations as well, the roots of unity. So you want to be able to come at it from uh, several points of view. Okay, have a look at those and pause it and have a, have a go and I'll show you the solutions. Let's go to four now. Okay. And then the solutions. Question one and two. And let's go to question three. And question four. How are you going? Interesting, isn't it? Some little tricky do's in there. I want you to try and keep that in mind about your basic techniques and just persevere as the going gets a bit tough with the algebra in some of these. Okay, let's go on. Here are some more questions. Five, six, and seven. Okay, very important. Related back to the roots of unity. That's very important. Okay. I'll show you the answers now to those. Question five. And question six. And question seven. Part A, alternative solutions there, a bit tricky that one, and B, part one, and part two. All right, coming to the end now, so uh, if you have to study the, some of those solutions carefully, talk to Classmates, talk to your teacher about those. Let's finish off now. Cubic and quartic problem solving. So we've done all these cubic and quartic polynomials and are there some applications? Yep, here are some here. And we're going to use the calculator quite a bit for this um, and uh, see what you think. Uh, but uh, yeah, so here we've got a, uh, a cubic uh, describing uh, some test barriers for cars. There's all sorts of applications. So uh, have a look at that. I'll go through several applications here where we're using cubics and quartics to model or uh, you know, show the pattern of what we see in a practical application. That's what modeling is, using maths to describe a practical situation. And there are some good models here for cubics and quartics. All right, have a go. I'll go to question two. There's question two. Interesting model up here. <clears throat> Read it carefully, underline stuff in the uh, expression, in the uh, formulation of the problem up there. So you pull it apart uh, gradually. Don't get mathematical indigestion. If you try to uh, make sense of it all in one go, you're going to get confused. So go through several times, underline the key facts and try to get uh, uh, an idea of what's going on. Sorry about that. Okay, let's go to question three. Question three, oh, I've got question four there as well. Okay, have a go at those four. I'll show you the solutions now. Okay, question one and uh, up to C in question two. Let's just bring question two up. 
Okay. Of course, you can use some calculus on uh, polynomials as well. It's not a part of this course at this stage. Well, we're doing it just from uh, looking at polynomial algebra per se. Let's have a look at question three. And then question four. Okay. Are you enjoying yourself? You're getting quite good, so uh, keep at it. And uh, go back over the presentation, look at some of those solutions, and talk to teachers and uh, classmates about that. All right, so uh, that's the end of polynomials. We'll have other um, topics in this course coming up. So hope to catch you then. Cheers for now.